Hey there, guys. Uh, we are at part two of this week's New Comics, bitches! <clears throat> Remind me not to do that one again. Anywho, uh, so, uh, Flashpoint number two. Okay, so main story. You know, again, we've got Jeff Johns, Andy Cooper, uh, doing some, you know, doing some pretty interesting work here. Um... This is, uh, you know, it starts out with, apparently Deathstroke is a pirate. You know, pirates are in, again, unfortunately. You know, I was hoping that no more fucking Pirates of the Caribbean movies were going to come out. This is, you know, but pirates are in. Uh, so, but he seems to meet a somewhat uh, possibly ignominious end at a very kind of Aryan-looking Aquaman uh very creepy looking. <laughs> he looks, I mean, if you, if anybody out there actually reads Captain America, and I hope that you all do, because Captain America is an awesome fucking comic, he kind of looks like Master Man. Uh, it's kind of, you know, that's who he really reminds me of. But, uh, you know, and then, uh, so that's, and he's doing his thing uh, around Europe. They're, you know, kind of looking for, you know, undersea, you know, treasure, because most of Europe is underwater. Um, but he's, you know, in a bad way, <laughs> uh, because Aquaman is, he's, doesn't seem like a very forgiving guy. Um, but then we go back to, you know, the Batcave in which, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, Barry Allen is confronting Thomas Wayne. He's talking to him, trying to figure out what the hell has gone on, uh, in, you know, what is going on in this universe. And, you know, he's trying to explain, you know, Barry's trying to explain, look, I'm the Flash, you know, I knew your son uh, in this other universe. And, you know, of course, you know, Batman is having none of this uh, because he just doesn't believe him. Um, so he pops out the, uh, you know, he pops out the ring and, you know, boom goes the, uh, <laughs> boom goes the, the costume. But it's the reverse Flash costume. So is your is uh, Eobard Thawne, uh Does he have something to do with this? Because obviously in Flash Rebirth, we had uh, you know the explanation of Nora Allen's uh, death. Her murder was not Barry Allen's father, uh, but was actually Professor Zoom. Uh, so and we have an interesting moment in which the memories you know of Barry Allen actually start to change. They start to actually have the... Uh, he starts to remember things that are actually going on in this universe, things that he's never experienced and, don't, and doesn't even know. So he knows that, okay, something, something seriously wrong is going on. And so his decision is that he needs his speed back. He needs to get back to his world or get, you know, get this history back, you know, because it's... It's unknown to him which is the which you know which reality is going to be which by you know by the end here, um, and then uh, we cut to uh, London and or New uh, Themyscira, uh, and we've got Steve Trevor uh, is trying to rescue Lois Lane who has embedded herself. She is still a journalist. She has embedded herself uh, as. Uh, one of the Amazons, uh, she's pretending that she's an Amazon, uh, and Steve Trevor, um, if you know your uh, history of Wonder Woman, uh, is trying to save her, but of course is captured by Queen Diana, or Wonder Woman, and uh, he, you know, I think she finds him somewhat interesting because at first he resists the uh, the lasso of truth. Um, so the question, you know, the question is, you know, what is going to happen to him now? What's she going to do with him? Um, and then we finish up the issue with a really interesting uh, bit where Barry is trying to basically replicate the experiment with Batman's help. The, well, not the experiment, the accident that turned him into the Flash. Because, hey, it worked for Wally West. Um, you know, same thing happened to him. So, uh, 
at the end of the issue you see how that goes. So I won't spoil anything here. Um, but uh, what's cool is that it has this little uh, it has this little map uh, at the end here that shows all of the you know what's going on in these different areas and uh, you know what areas uh, seem to be you know under certain controls. Brazil is completely Nazi occupied, for instance. Um, you know there is you know Green Arrow uh, Industries. Uh, you know, uh, Africa is all guerrilla controlled, so that, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Gorilla Island, Gorilla Grodd, uh, Solovar, um, you know, whatever's going on there. Um, of course, you know, Australia is just a neutral territory. Um, and then, you know, of course, there's, uh, you know, the Amazon, the big red circle here is the Amazon Atlantean war zone. And then there's other places, uh, you know, like the Land of the Undead is in Alaska. Uh, and there's Project S in Metropolis, which, of course, we're assuming to be Superman. Um, this, uh, at least, is good, uh, apart from the tie-ins, uh, which were all very subpar. Um, so this is, this is really cool. Um, not great. It's, you know, it's still more, you know, kind of, you know, Obviously, okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about Flashpoint right now and what's going on, because we have to. Um, because as most of you know, and I, I already did, uh, you know, an episode uh, in regards to Flashpoint um, and what's going to be going on at, the, you know, at the end of August in which uh, all of the, uh, or 75%, approximately 75% of the DC Comics are, you know, of the main universe DC Comics are going to be renumbered to number one. Um, so this is obviously a big deal for a lot of people. Um, now, the uh, a couple of things I've heard about what they're going to do for a couple of things. Uh, some of the uh, restructuring that they're doing, um, for instance. Uh, Gail Simone, uh, aside, you know, aside from uh, currently Scott Snyder, probably my favorite writer over at DC, um, is doing uh, is going to be writing with Ethan Van Skyver. Not he's not going to be doing art. He's going to be co-writing uh, with Ethan Van Skyver a, a Fury of Firestorm comic. Um, the art is going to be done by somebody that I'm not familiar with, but that's, uh, that's been one of the things I've heard. There's, um, I can't remember what some of the other creative teams and, you know, there's going to be a Mr. Terrific comic, uh, which is cool because, um, there, you know, one of, uh, the, another interesting, uh, question that's come out of this whole thing, I think is that there don't seem to be many, uh, ethnic groups properly represented in comics today. And that is true. Um, you know, most comic book, you know, most comic heroes, uh, you know, most comic heroes, most comic villains are, uh, you know, are white males. Um, you know, there's not too many, you know, on both Marvel and DC. Um, you know, when I think of, you know, my favorites, uh, you know, characters of, you know, uh, differing ethnicity, uh, I think of characters like, you know, the, the Bendis era Luke Cage, uh, because, you know, kind of his groovy, you know, 70s black exploitation stuff is a little too corny. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, DC has, like, Renee Montoya, The Question, you know, as Cassandra Cain, Batgirl, uh, you know, Cheshire, um, you know, so, I mean, there's not a lot of characters of color, if you will. So, I mean, uh, the, you know, the thought that they're going to be introducing some of these people, uh, back into, uh, a major, you know, you know, with this major reboot. And of course, you know, uh, lest I forget, of course, the Jeff Johns and Jim Lee, uh, uh, new Justice League comic that's going to be uh, coming. That's 
very interesting uh, work there. Um, but if they're going to be doing it, see, because a lot of people are saying, okay, well, they're not going to cancel, you know, they're not going to renumber uh, Batman or Super, you know, they're not going to renumber Batman or Green Lantern because those are two of DC's best-selling comics. And while that may be true, but if you have a Justice League, um, and, you know, if you've seen the, the, the cover, because it's on the net now, the cover to the first issue. It may be the cover, or it may be you know just promotional art. You see, you know, there's there's you know there's Superman, there's Wonder Woman, there's Batman, there's Green Lantern, there's Flash. Uh, I think Cyborg was there too, um, but uh, yeah. Um, then you have to have a reimagining of Batman. You have to have a reimagining of Green Lantern. Um, so I mean that you know, unless this um, unless the whole Flashpoint universe is going to t take place in a completely different universe, then you know in this post Flashpoint era, where wherever that they're going towards. Um, again, you know, a lot of people seem to be against this. I'm not against it. Um, I think it's an interesting idea uh, to let. But at the same time, I also feel it's kind of a forced evolution. Um, and that could, I mean, it's really, you know, it can really be a make or break. Um, also, you know, the same, you know, the day and date uh, digital releases, uh, you know, that's could be, you know, that could be a huge, you know, that, you know, that could be a huge thing or could blow up in the industry's face. Um, so, I mean, DC is doing probably the riskiest thing it's ever done. And to that, I have to credit them with some really huge balls. Um, and, you know, like I said, I mean, that's, that's good, man. I mean, it, it, something to shake up the status quo is generally a good thing when it's uh, deserved, when people own it. And it really feels like, from what I've been reading, it really feels like the people at DC are going to own this. Um, so I'm hoping that this will, uh, you know, I'm really hoping that this turns out to be good and not a big train wreck. Um, you know, because, uh, you know, there's obviously, there's the, you know, kind of, uh, you know, they could be setting themselves up for easier piracy. Uh, if they're going to be doing this day and date uh, digital releasing, if they're going to be doing it in conjunction apparently with Apple, um, that may limit some of the creativity because of the uh, the restrictions that uh, Steve Jobs has uh, that you know that he's kind of helping to enforce as far as you know like things that are too obscene or things that are, you know, th things that the morality police at Apple seem to deem too obscene. You know, they always say, you know, the, the big quote is, you know, if you, you know, for instance, if you have an iPhone and you want to watch porn, you know, his quote has always been, get a droid. Well, I have a droid and I can watch porn on it. So, um, but that's just, you know, that's, to me, that's an example of, well, you know, we're enforcing our own censorship. Um, you know, it's a self-enforced censorship rather than, uh, you know, rather than letting people choose. Um, and I'm sure that there are ways around it on Apple uh, devices, so, you know, I'm not really going to, you know, get too crazy about that. But that's just something that it does bother me, though, uh, a little bit. Um, but anyway, so we're going to be back, uh, and we're going to kind of plow through... Uh, some more comics here because there's a uh, there's there's a pretty decent amount to cover here uh, this week so uh, so we're off a of flashpoint now so now we're gonna get into the other stuff okay so uh, meet you back here in just a few <laughs>